how on earth did you get back in the middle of a war zone in the middle of a war? Well, you know, and this is another point that I'll make just on the, we're, we're sort of seeing a lot of news reports um, in the past few days. And, and a lot of this was coming from, from Kiev officials too, that the city was completely besieged. Mm-hmm. Um, there was no way to get in. And and when I know I'd said to, to people that I wanted to get in and I had one friend who said, oh, you know, I'm in touch with the top levels of the United States government intelligence. And they said, there's absolutely no way that anyone is getting in or out of Kiev. And I just thought, oh, I'll find a way. So I had no concept of what I was doing. So when the invasion started, I thought, I can't sit it out. It just felt like such an important story. And this was happening in Europe. And it just, I'd already invested so much time. So I thought, I just, I have to figure it out. So I flew to Budapest in Hungary. And then I had a random sort of follower on Instagram, really, who had been chatting to me for the past couple of months, just a young guy who ran sort of security. He'd said, you know, if you ever need anything in Budapest, let me know. And he happened to message me that day. And I said, look, I'm flying to Budapest to try to get to Ukraine. And he said, well, you know, you're welcome to stay at, you know, I live with my girlfriend and sister. You're welcome to stay at our apartment if you need it. So I said, great, fine. (laughs) So I, I went to Budapest you know, these lovely random young um, Hungarians took me in. And then the next day he drove me down to the border and we took a bunch of supplies for the refugees, Ukrainian refugees fleeing. And we went to this tiny little border village and, Honestly, I didn't know anybody. He had to go back to um, to Budapest. And so I went to a church and it, it, through the language barrier, um, they were just the loveliest people. And they gave me a, a, the, the church office to sleep in that night as I was mm-hmm. kind of making plans of how I was going to get in. Through a contact of a contact of a contact, I said, look, I'm trying to get into Kiev and I, I don't know anyone right there that, that can drive me because it's a long distance. And by some sort of angel, this lovely girl called me and she said, I can pick you up at at 10 a.m. from the border tomorrow um, if you're ready to go. And I just thought, I don't know. But I said, how long is it going to take us to get to Kiev? And she said, well, normally eight hours, but we're not taking any highways because they're all dangerous and the bridges are broken. Mm -hmm. So we're just going to take little back roads and it'll take about 20 hours. And I thought, okay, I'm just going to do it. Um, so I crossed the, I walked over the Hungarian border into Ukraine and the lovely people were there to meet me. And she was just sort of calm angel who just was like, oh, welcome. You know, we're going to have a nice road trip. And so uh, we basically drove through the night. It was, it was 20 hours. Um, we didn't stop. We took back roads. And obviously because there is curfew, that was a little bit dangerous because, we didn't want our car to be shot at. So Mm -hmm. you sort of have to drive with very low lights and it's snowing and, and there were just so many checkpoints. So just, I think I I lost count after a while, but I was counting for a while and I got to almost 40. So what happens, you get to a checkpoint in the night and you just sort of see a flash of light. Someone would wave a light and then it would go off. And so you would just turn the interior of the car on so that they could Mm -hmm. see you just stop. And then, they would instruct you to kind of move forward and check your passports and things like that. And I say it's the first time that I um, I found it much easier to be a woman in a war zone, normally not. But because we were women in the car, so we weren't sort of double checked. Um, We weren't really seen as threatening. And because we were taking medical supplies to to some of the volunteer fighters. So I think they appreciated that. But eventually we got into Kiev and that was early morning yesterday, my time. So I had a little bit of a nap at at her apartment just outside the city. And then um, I started to get concerned. I needed to get into the city before any closures sort of happened. Um, So basically called a cab. Cab took me to my normal hotel that I stay in in Kiev. And then I, I set up and, and got the ground running today with, uh, with interviews sort of all over the the city before curfew at at 5 PM. Now, now why was the, uh, the Thelma of Thelma and Louise part? Why was she coming into the, Two nut, two nutty gals driving at mid. Anyhow, um, uh, why was she going down? She's just go. She's as I said, she's just an angel of a human being. Wow. She um, is just going back and forth, driving across the country, back and forth, taking supplies. So I because see. there are no medicines in Kiev, there's everything is closed. There's sort of mm-hmm. not a lot coming in and out. So she will drive to the western part of the country where there are still things operating 
pick up uh, medicine. She'll also go to the border because they're her and sort of a group of volunteers on Facebook, really uh, getting donations and, and to buy medical supplies and things that mm -hmm. um, a lot of the volunteers need. Um, I know things like body armor they're really trying to get, but that that is a little bit difficult. So they're going to, you know, the Polish border or the Romanian border and, and organizing to pick up supplies and, and then bring them and, and distribute them back to Kiev. So basically, you know, she was on the road again today, um, also helping evacuate people. So she's taking a lot of the elderly people and people with pets and and taking them to some of the border areas as well. So who are very scared or scared to get on trains and things. So as a, Ukrainians have come together in just the most amazing way and, and people are just so incredibly giving and and I could also say that for you know the Hungarians that I saw just people donating mm -hmm. whatever they possibly could giving cash giving food giving money what it's really it's given me so much faith in humanity that I think I lost for a while and so I always say about war is it it really is the worst of people but it, it is the best of people too and you see how people come together and it just is so generous and so giving and in throughout the difficult times. And it's, um, yeah, it's really inspiring to see.